I've been thinking a lot lately about St. Augustine. Actually, to be more specific, I've been thinking about St. Augustine's penis. Actually, to be more specific still, I've been thinking about St. Augustine and his unruly penis. Um, he wrote about how disobedient and unruly the penis can be because sometimes it gets erect when you don't want it to. And because sex, according to him, was only something that should be done for procreation, there was also a problem because sometimes when you want it to get erect for procreation, it just won't. And so he thought that the reason that God gave us a disobedient organ, and this is not me making this up, he wrote this, the reason that God gave us a disobedient organ was to remind us that the original sin was disobedience to God's word. So the penis was given to us to remind us always of that the, that the body is disobedient. And this is, I think, remarkably important because it is at the core, really, of patriarchy and at the core of ultimately how this culture, why this culture is killing the planet. I'm not blaming St. Augustine. He's merely articulating a problem of mind over matter. The mind over matter is, he was very upset that the penis would not respond to his will. And Mind over matter is, among many other things, the mindset adopted by a profoundly traumatized people. Because children who've been traumatized are, or, or really the nature of trauma in general is that you are out of control. And it doesn't matter whether it's an earthquake, uh, whether you're in a prison, whether you're in a child abuse situation, whether you're being sexually assaulted, whether you're in a war, the fundamental element of trauma, or, uh, of, of being traumatized, is a lack of control and a lack of choice. Because if you can walk away, you will. But if you're in the middle of an earthquake, there's nothing you can do except for, I mean, there's nothing you can do about the earthquake. I mean, you can certainly try to get out of buildings, et cetera, but you can't, you are still out of control. Traumatized people often end up wanting to, needing to control their surroundings. And this control can be benign as in a, I mean, the stereotypical example is the, the war veteran who is, terrified, who now doesn't like loud noises, and so will avoid a 4th of July celebration. That's relatively benign. Um, and on the other hand, it can also be not benign, as in, um, you know, someone who is abused as a, as a child, sometimes they don't end up being abusers themselves, but if they do end up abusers themselves, one of the hallmarks of abuse is the attempt to control your victims. And so they are attempting to control their surroundings. Uh, you're not going to talk to anybody else. You are going to do what I say. You will follow this. You will act according to the way I say. You're controlling. And of course, what is the dominant culture doing to the planet? It is attempting to control everything. And in 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 the process of doing so it's killing everything because wild nature is as david ehrenfeld said not only more complex than we think it's more complex than we're capable of thinking we cannot control it and this whole notion of mind over matter is is central to one of the most foundational ideas of this entire culture which is the great the great chain of being which holds that which held at one point that God is at the top 
and then angels, and then kings, and then priests, and then normal men, and then normal women, and then various mammals, then birds, then other non-humans, and then precious gems, then rocks, other rocks, and then sand. And basically, it was a scale from absolute disembodied perfection, pure mind, down to pure body with no mind. And it is explicitly a hierarchy where those above may use those below. And it's been a justification for the divine right of kings. It's been a justification for um, men's abuse of women, you know, men ownership, male ownership of the bodies of women because women are more associated with the body. Men, women, according to St. Augustine, were the temptresses who were put there to tempt us away from our minds um, and tempt us away from God um, with their womanly bodies. And this was the idea, but it's morphed a bit through the uh, secularization of society such that nowadays it's not really God at the top, but it's pure reason and um, machines and still the disembodied, the perfection of the machine. And so it still is there. It's just that God's been replaced by machines, really. God's been replaced by computers, et cetera, et cetera. And the point is that it's still mind over matter. And the point is that mind over matter is still a destructive way to be. I just the other day had a conversation with somebody who said that uh, she is not her body, that she is her mind. And uh, she was talking about wanting to upload her mind onto a computer hard drive so it would stay forever. And, you know, it'd be nice to just go, wow, that's kind of crazy, but that's, that's not out of line with the movement of the culture. In fact, just yesterday, just yesterday, somebody said to me, how can you say we need to bring down civilization? And I said, well, basically, how can you say we should not? And he said, well, because, because where civilization is going is the replacement of biological organisms with machines. And I said, yeah, that's a reason to stop it. And he was like, no, 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 this is good. And you see how this still fits with the mind over matter? Because nature, you know, I talk a lot about the bears and the interesting thing about the bears is, and by the way, he called them biological organisms. And I, I responded by saying, oh, you mean plants, animals, our kin? And the thing about the bears that I always talk about is that they're wild. They come and they go. And I don't, if, if, if I never see one again, like there was one I called Big Bear who was around a lot a year ago and he disappeared last November. October, and I haven't seen him since, and I don't know if I'll ever see him again. He may be dead, he may be somewhere else, and I will never know. And that's the thing about nature is that it is wild and unpredictable. And, and sometimes, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when, when males are young, we get erections at embarrassing times. And sometimes when males are old, we don't get erections at embarrassing times. And that's life. And I think we would all be better off. We, 
by which I don't mean just humans, I mean everybody, would all be better off if we would drop the mind over matter belief and recognize that we are matter and the mind is in fact matter. <laughs>